This educational video is on the equine digestive tract. If you need additional time on any slides, please feel free to hit the pause button until you're ready to move on. The horse is a non-ruminant herbivore, meaning it eats plants and has a simple stomach with only one compartment. This makes the horse's gut fairly unique among other livestock species. Most livestock species are ruminants, meaning they have stomachs which are divided into compartments. Cattle, sheep, and goats are all ruminants, while horses, dogs, cats, pigs, and humans all have simple stomachs. The job of the equine digestive system is to break down food particles and absorb nutrients. Nutrients from different types of feed are digested in certain areas along the equine GI tract, as well as at different rates. The digestive tract is an extremely delicate and complex system in the horse. There are two main parts to this system, the foregut and the hindgut. The foregut includes the lips, teeth, tongue, esophagus, stomach, and small intestine. The hindgut includes the cecum, large colon, small colon, and rectum. In this picture, Abby shows us how the digestive system all fits into a horse. Imagine a 100-foot garden hose, gather it all up, and put it in your horse with one end at its mouth and the other at its tail, with the rest piled up in its abdominal cavity. The extended length of the digestive system and the complexity involved in digestion, it is extremely important that everything work properly and remain in the right place at all times. If any part of this is not able to function properly or becomes displaced, the horse can have multiple problems including oral problems, choke, gastric ulcers, and intestinal problems. Let's get started on how the equine digestive system works. The first part of digestion actually begins in the mouth with chewing feed materials. This feed is then mixed with saliva to further break down feed stuff. Once the food is chewed, the base of the tongue will push the food past the soft palate and into the pharynx. The pharynx connects the mouth to the esophagus. The main job of the esophagus is to move feed from the mouth to the stomach. Feed will be pushed down to the stomach through the esophagus by contractions. In a horse, these contractions work in only one direction, which means horses are unable to vomit. The esophagus is approximately 40 to 60 inches in length. The main problem associated with the esophagus is choke. While eating, horses hold food at the back of their mouth before swallowing. When food is mixed with the saliva and then propelled down the esophagus by the strong muscular contractions, ideally there is enough saliva to help the food slide down the esophagus. However, some horses eat way too fast and don't chew food completely. When this happens, food is not mixed with enough saliva and the food can become wedged in the esophagus making a horse choke. Food from the esophagus then travels into the stomach. Only a small amount of digestion actually takes place in the horse's stomach. Remember from an earlier slide that the horse has a monogastric stomach, meaning a single compartment or a simple stomach. The stomach contains mainly digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid. An equine stomach can hold only about two gallons and food will remain in here for approximately 15 minutes or until it's about two thirds full. After this, the stomach will empty into the small intestine. The horse's stomach is not very large because they were made to continuously graze and take in small amount of forage on a steady basis. One of the problems associated with the equine stomach and digestion is ulcers. Since they are supposed to continuously have food in their stomachs, the horse continuously produces hydrochloric acid to help break down feed material. When horses are fed at certain times only, this acid can build up and become extremely acidic to the stomach lining, which increases their risk for gastric ulcers. 
two other problems associated with the stomach and digestion is rupture and colic. If the stomach becomes too full, such as during a grain overload, the stomach can actually rupture. Remember, horses cannot vomit, so once the food is down, it's down for good. If the stomach is too full also, it can make the small intestine distend or expand, which is extremely painful and a very common cause of colic. From the stomach, digestion moves into the small intestine. The small intestine is the main site for nutrient absorption. Digestive enzymes are produced here and nutrients are broken down into smaller components that can then be absorbed into the bloodstream. Almost all dietary fat is absorbed in the small intestine, including soluble carbohydrates, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals. It is about 70 feet in length and can hold approximately 30% of the capacity of the entire digestive tract. For as long and as important as the small intestine is, it's only about 2 inches in diameter. Digesta will remain in the small intestine for about 60 to 90 minutes before moving all the way through. With about 70 feet of small intestine in a small space, it has to be arranged in a very specific way. There are a series of folds and coils suspended by a membrane called the mesentery. The first section is in a U-shaped curve, which helps prevent digesta from being forced back into the stomach if it becomes distended. If a blockage occurs and feed plugs up into the small intestine, it can back up no farther than the stomach. The one-way valve between the stomach and esophagus keeps it from coming all the way up into the esophagus. The vessels in the mesentery can also be involved in obstruction of flow of blood, or even create strangulation of the intestine in some causes of colic. Now that we have learned the complex process just to get food deep into the digestive system, let's move on to the hindgut. The large intestine is comprised of multiple parts, including the cecum, large colon, small colon, and rectum. In the large intestine, enzymes break down plant fiber, which is then converted into fatty acids, which are absorbed and provide the horse with an energy source. The first stop in the large intestine is the cecum. Here, cellulose is converted to fatty acids and microbial fermentation. The cecum is about 4 feet in length and can hold up to 10 gallons. Digesta will move through in about 5 to 6 hours. The cecum is found in the high right flank area of the horse and it extends down and forward towards the diaphragm. If a horse overloads on a meal or has too many soluble carbohydrates, it may overwhelm the capacity of the foregut and can cause undigested food to spill into the cecum. The hindgut is not equipped to handle this overload, so the bacteria in the cecum may produce excess gas from digesting food components that should have been digested earlier. The result of this gas can be pain and colic as well as diarrhea. The microbial population of the hindgut is specific to the horse and its diet. This is why diet changes have to be made very slowly. From the cecum, digesta will move into the large colon. The large colon is built for nutrient absorption and continued microbial activity. It is approximately 10 to 12 feet in length and can hold about 38% of the digestive tract's capacity, which is the largest amount along the entire tract. Food will spend 36 to 48 hours here.
The design of the large colon alone is a large risk factor for colic. The ventral colons have a sacculated construction which resembles a series of pouches. This design facilitates digestion of large quantities of fibrous materials. The pouches can easily become twisted and fill with gas due to fermentation of feed. The ventral colon is also the lowest portion of the GI tract and the most common place for sand accumulation if horses are grazing on sandy soil. From the large colon, ingesta moves to the small colon, where water and mineral absorption take place. Also in the small colon, the contents begin to take on a solid shape and mold into fecal balls. The small colon is 10 to 12 feet in length and about 4 inches in diameter. It has a capacity of around 5 gallons. The final area of the equine digestive system is the rectum, which is used for the storage and expulsion of feces. The rectum is about 12 inches in length. We hope you enjoyed this educational video on the equine digestive system. For more videos and information, please check out our website, Facebook page, YouTube channel, and Twitter account.